Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Cyber Learnathon. We have with us a fantastic expert panel to learn about careers in our region and in a cybersecurity across the world and in our local region, how those pathways come together. This episode is brought to you by Newton's Road and 20 Fathoms Cyber TC Cyber Program. You, of course, are now familiar as members of the Cyber Learnathon that um, these are high in demand skills and share the word. Um, there will be this recording available afterwards. And so you can share what you've been learning about with other people as well. And a little bit about Newton's Road. We are a nonprofit that's dedicated to STEM related learning, such as tech, for all youth in our region. And through these experiences and exploring careers, we are empowering our young people to thrive in our community and beyond. And we're doing this because of the future where we need citizenry that are fluent in science, technology, engineering, and math. And because these occupations, should a young person be interested in pursuing them, are growing at a much higher rate than any other um, kind of career family and they are economically advantaged as well with great um, salaries for most of these careers. We have a regional STEM hub where you can find all things STEM in our region offered by Newton's Road, but also by many other organizations across our five county region. And we've been acting as a connector to STEM since 2010. And related to our topic today, we have the Career Investigator for Northwest Michigan. This is an engaging online tool. You see the URL in the top corner where you could learn about tech careers, but also manufacturing, healthcare, um, and environmental careers are, in the, and, uh, are being added as we speak. Um, and you can find about those local pathways and the growth um, projection for our region and for the state and the country for every career. We also have uh, YouTube where this recording will be found afterwards, where we have STEM at home, but also STEM career videos. And that's where this one will be. And we have, in fact, one of our guests, uh, some of our guests here have been on other programs and well in other areas of IT previously. And now I'm going to transition to the facilitator for this program, Cindy Milnes. She's also been your instructor in this course. Cindy, it's all yours. Thank you, Barb. Um, so I just want to introduce myself real quick. I've been an educator in cybersecurity and computer networking at both the high school and college level for the last 12 years. And I'm happy to be with, he, with you here all today. Um, we are gonna introduce the panelists here in just a minute, but first I wanted to call attention to some of the amazing things that are happening in cybersecurity. Um, one, this is one of the fastest growth areas um, as far as jobs go, but as far as just um, overall in the industry, we have um, smart cities that are developing um, all over the world. We have IoT devices. Um, this here chart shows that um, some really interesting facts. We have um, a fact here that Cisco blocked 7 trillion threats um, over the course of 2019, and that was 213 per day. Um, so there's a lot happening in cybersecurity, um, and it is just going to continue to grow as we continue to build out an infrastructure and a, and a connected society all across the world. So one of the things I want to mention, if um, Barb, you want to switch to the next slide before we start our um, panel introductions, is specifically um, the front, and this comes directly from the new uh, the uh, career. A website that with the, um, the career wheel that Newton's Road has developed. Um, and this is showing the cybersecurity analyst position, which is a very, um, you know, one of many cybersecurity positions. Um, and showing you here in this 10 county region, we're looking at a 10% uh, job growth projection. Um, the state of Michigan, 35% is the growth that we're looking at. And um, we really are seeing a, a huge demand in this area as we see um, the news is constantly filled with, with new um, attacks and new um, situations that have come up every single day. So I'd like to go ahead and um, start with some introductions. 
And I think we've got the next slide. Um, so let's just go around and if you can each just take a minute or two to introduce yourself. Um, there are also um, bios that were um, included. So I'm sure you can um, take a look too um, if you want some more information on these folks, but if we can just go around and um, let's start with Scott and give just a, a quick intro. Hi, my name is Scott Gulpels and I'm an instructor at Northwestern Michigan College. And I've been teaching for the past 21 years, uh, finishing up my 21st year this uh, July, actually. And uh, prior to becoming a teacher, I've been involved in the IT for uh, over, I guess, a total of 30 years now, including my teaching. I started out in manufacturing and went to the uh, banking or finance industry. Uh, started out as a programmer, got involved in infrastructure uh, and have been teaching in those areas for quite some time. I'm certified in several different uh, uh, technical uh, areas. Um, in my teaching, I focus primarily on the IT infrastructure side, as well as some of the cybersecurity courses at Northwestern Michigan College. Uh, and I continue to do consulting in the local area for companies uh, that I can help with their uh, infrastructure and cybersecurity needs. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, another educator that we have joining us today, Colin O'Brien, you wanna um, give a quick intro? Sure, thank you, Cindy. My name is Colin O'Brien and I'm the IT instructor over at the TBA ISD Career Tech Center here in town. And uh, we service the, um, the five county region, juniors and seniors in uh, about 26 different high schools. So I've been teaching there. This is my sixth year teaching IT at uh, the Career Tech Center. Prior to that, I taught Cisco and IT for five years downstate in the Detroit area. So prior to me moving to education, I had a business background and business management. And I, I really liked working with young people. And so I wanted to try to merge my business background with something that was going to be relevant for young people so they could find a pathway. And I thought that IT was it. So I, I love working with the students. And uh, together, we've built a pretty nice relationship with NMC and their IT staff as well. Super. Thanks, Colin. We also have a couple of folks joining us today from the industry side. Um, Jeff Mertz from SafetyNet, if you want to go ahead and give us a, a quick intro. Uh, hi, Jeff Mertz. I work with SafetyNet here in Traverse City. Uh, we have two locations, headquartered in Traverse City and then a uh, second location down in the Farmington Hills area outside Detroit. I've been with uh, SafetyNet oh, 14 years now. Um, I've been in the IT industry about 21 years. I've worked at GM Eaton um, for a company in Lansing, kind of been all over the state. Um, Right now, my uh, primary duties are um, project management, senior uh, network and infrastructure engineering, and security engineering. So, um, you know, putting in secure networks and uh, responding to security incidents. Right. Well, we're happy to have you here, Jeff. Thank you. And um, last but not least, Selena Olmstead from Munson Healthcare um, and also works with the local organization ISSA. Selena? Thanks, Cindy. Hello, my name is Selena Olmstead. Uh, like Cindy said, I work for Munson Healthcare. I've been a security analyst there for about three years. I've been in the industry uh, for about 13 years overall. I'm the secretary with the Information Systems Security Association, uh, the local chapter here in Travers. Super. All right, well, thank you very much. And we will hear more from these folks here as we um, venture into our panel discussion. Um, all right, so we are going to start with um, the industry side, and I've got a few questions here. Now, for those of you who are attending today and you would like to ask um, a question, please do so in the chat. Um, you can put your questions there. And when we get to the end of the um, educator questions, uh, we'll start first with the industry, then educator. When we get af after, when we start at that point um, with the um, questions from the audience, we will also add some questions that we've received ahead of time as well. So first of all, um, I'd like to start with Selena. Um, Selena, would you mind sharing your journey to becoming a cybersecurity professional? Sure. So I was very fortunate and I had a rather unorthodox journey into the security information field. Uh, when I was a student, my background was actually in cellular and molecular biology. So I still had that STEM background 
And during the summers while I was in college, I interned with a financial institution. They were spinning up their information security program. Knew uh, I had a science background. I was rather analytical. They had been happy with my work ethic and all that good stuff while I was employed with the organization prior. And they brought me on board into that program. And I've been working in it ever since. I, although I don't have, I didn't have the formal educational background, I was able to supplement my experience with certifications from the industry. I earned the Certified Information Security Practitioner or CISSP certification. I went back to NMC, our local college here, and did a couple technical courses for information security where I met Scott. And those were very helpful when I was starting out. I went through a couple other certifications specifically for incident handling and digital forensics. And I've been working on it ever since. Fantastic. Um, and I think that you hear that quite a bit where people kind of come in unconventionally. Um, how about you, Jeff? How did you, um, what was start, what was your journey like getting into this field? What made you um, join um, the, the world of cybersecurity? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for me, um, you know, I started off as a nerd way back in the way back with my grandma's Tandy 1000, making it sing happy birthday and change the color of the screens and basic. Always kind of been interested in technology. I uh, actually went to Michigan State originally for materials engineering, again, right, the biology, chemistry related stuff. I transitioned over to computational mathematics um, because at the time there wasn't like a network administration degree. You were either hard comp sci or computational mathematics, which is the math side of computer programming and chip analytics and stuff. Life happens, end up uh, working at GM in the computer room because I have a technical background um, and just kind of went from there through the infrastructure and administration side of things. Um, there wasn't cybersecurity back then. It was just administrators doing the best they can you know, using Microsoft guidelines and Microsoft standards and, uh, you know, industry best practices, passwords, changing passwords. Um, but it wasn't really that secure back then. It was more about getting the technology to work, you know, in the early 2000s to the mid 2000s until um, moving up here to safety net, bringing our enterprise um, standards into the small business that we really started emphasizing that security and standardization and implementing, um, you know, stronger and stronger security in the small business, um, just kind of as the lead network engineer, seeing the gaps in security led me to be educating myself on security, um, taking my Cisco route from an infrastructure route into the Cisco security route for my CCMP, um, you know, allowed me to be able to then learn more about the industry standards with security, um, getting my certification uh, as a certified ethical hacker, um, you know, allowing me then to know what is going on in the offensive security world so I can leverage defensive security to keep them out. Um, and again, I haven't got my CISP yet. Um, congratulations, Selena. It's a mm -hmm. big exam. Um, but learning the incident handling, uh, proper response reporting, um, you know, learning all the, not necessarily the technical skills. It's pretty cool to spin up a Kali Linux box and attack a network uh, in the lab environment, you know, to see how you can break things, but learning how to write a proper email, how to document an incident. Um, documentation is key when you, when the FBI starts calling and they need to know when something happened, having documentation on hand, it's pretty important. Um, and knowing how to talk to a client over, hey, we're very sorry, your entire network got crypto locked. Here's how we can help remediate this and get you back up and running as quickly as possible is a hard conversation to have. So just years of experience, um, management training classes actually have come in very handy in learning how to speak with other groups outside of the technical industry. Um, you know, sometimes a business owner or a business manager doesn't understand the technical thing. They just know their stuff is broke. So being able to communicate, um, you know, taking courses to improve myself there has been very beneficial to in being better at cybersecurity. Um, you know, so it's kind of been a roundabout way, but I'm, you know, yeah. as safety net adds more and more security um, offerings into our programs, I need to be able to you know, keep myself up to date so I can 
uh, help educate my team and help educate myself into uh, being a better cybersecurity professional myself. So. Okay, great. Um, I really like how both of you mentioned um, some of the skills. Um, Jeff, you mentioned some of the, 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 documentation that's quite required. And I, I like that because that's one of the things I drive my students for is, you know, being able to properly write and communicate. Um, what would you say would be the skills? If, if I was starting out, if I was middle high school level, what kind of skills should I be working on or recognizing as things that skills that might be um, applicable to somebody who's going to go out, down in that cybersecurity pathway? And if maybe we can start with you, um, you did mention the documentation, but anything else on the technical side or on the soft skill side, and then we can uh, go to Selena after that. Um, what I'm seeing in the, um, I work at an MSP, so I work with a lot of different small businesses. Um, so my uh, perspective might be a little different than Selena's being mm -hmm. in a larger enterprise environment, is um, it's a combination of very hard technical and troubleshooting skills, very analytical, right? Puzzle solving, pattern recognition, being able to see someone be like, hey, we had this weird thing happen and having, being able to know what to look in with the links and the combination of logs and seeing those puzzle pieces line up. Mm -hmm. If you have those kind of analytical skills, good at math, obviously that leads to that you know, those analytical puzzle solving skills. But at the same time, I think that um, not diving too deep into the technical side of stuff, which is very good and very important, but not just building stuff in a lab and running um, Kali Linux attack boxes in a lab to learn how to, you know, run Mimikatz against a server, you know, how to use can't enable to crack some passwords or, you know, crack some wireless. That's fun. I love doing it. I, that's why I have a lab. It's, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but being able then to also communicate that and being comfortable speaking in front of people, um, you know, it can be the hardest part of a technical career is being able to do things like this we're doing today, being able to get in front of people and speak, mm -hmm. know you're being recorded, um, you know, speak in front of um, you know, VIP clients or, or bosses in a company, um, you know, without getting nervous. Uh, so building that practice, building that confidence in, in writing clearly and speaking and communicating clearly verbally. Um, so you can explain what you need, what has happened and, and how, to, how to help your company or your clients get through any troubles or prevent any troubles they're having. Um, I think is sometimes the biggest thing I see in younger IT professionals mm -hmm. is just having the confidence to in the soft skills and the writing and the speaking. Um, and it's one of the things that, especially as us as being externally facing um, and, and working with lots of different clients, people have to be comfortable speaking with essentially strangers about difficult topics. And that can be hard for a lot of younger um, uh, technical people coming into the industry. Right. Thank you. Selena, um, anything you want to add as far as um, technical or soft skills that you think would be um, important for somebody going into the cybersecurity field? Uh, from the technical side, I would highly recommend somebody to learn a scripting or programming language mm -hmm. from the sense of being able to automate simple tasks, being able to scrape through, grip through large amounts of data uh, that can make it much, much quicker and than having to manually sort through something. There are lots of tools that can help you with that and lots of platforms to learn more about those programming languages and scripting languages. And I just want to reiterate uh, what Jeff was saying with the communications. If you're not able to articulate to your senior leadership what you need, you may be, you may be uh, competing with business resources for budget and if you're not going to be able to articulate what you need, why the organization needs a certain control or technology or process in place to protect itself, you may be without that and make your job much, much harder. It's, the business will yeah. prioritize making money compared to uh, something a little bit less tangible than just being secure. Yeah. And I think that brings up a valid point, too, in that 
you need to be aware of the business and the business needs. And so it's really not just about the technology, but it's, it's really about how that technology fits into the whole big picture. Um, all right, so I'd love to hear, and I know there's probably not a typical day, but what does a day, a typical day look like in your world? And maybe it could be pre and post COVID pandemic, because um, it might look a little different. So what would that look like? For me, my day starts off, I like to look at what's going on, if there's any new buzz, any new vulnerabilities or things I need to be aware of. Uh, coordinating with my team, we do a daily huddle where we all talk about things that may have come up either the day before or things that we know of coming up the next day. So we can all be on the same page and I'll be aware of any incidents that we may be seeing coming down the pipeline, either security related or just technology side within the business, things we need to be aware of. We also work with our security operations center for things that they are seeing. And then we'll dig into project requests, making sure that we are doing our audit work. So we're all safe and secure. Uh, currently we have a project going on to do third party audits. So not only are we secure, but everybody else in our business channels, our third party, our supply chains, they are also secure. So if they have an incident, it's not going to impact us as much. And then whatever may happen, uh, we rely heavily on email. If somebody is having trouble, they may reach out to us directly. Uh, from, from a healthcare provider, our privacy office works with us quite a bit. We're available for customers if they have any questions. So it's quite a varied day. Yeah, probably never a dull moment, I would imagine. <laughs> um, you are in healthcare, in the healthcare area. Um, I know that a lot of these folks that are, are participating in this today are, are just learning about cybersecurity and, and the possibilities. Um, but healthcare is an area of focus that, um, that really has a lot of compliance issues. Is that something that you have to focus on as well, is making sure that you're compliant with certain uh, rules or regulations that exist? It does. Uh, HIPAA, the Health Information Portability and Privacy Act, oh, uh, Accountability Act is one of the biggest regulations that we have to comply with. We also uh, focus on a couple other uh, a couple other privacy frameworks and security frameworks. Uh, one is called High Trust. The other one is the National Institutes of Standards and Technologies Cybersecurity Framework, or the NIST. CSF. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a lot of um, recommendations to follow, requirements to follow, to make sure that we are managing a secure program. And HIPAA also deals a lot with the privacy to make sure not only is the data secure, but it can be shared with other healthcare organizations in a safe and secure manner to make sure that patient care can happen as it needs to. Super. And then Jeff, um, what does a, a typical day look like for you? And I'm curious as to um, how the, the firewall um, that you're going to be going to work on afterwards fits into that as well. So I'm, I'm anxious to hear how your typical day sounds. I'm, a, like I said, I'm a senior network engineer, project manager, and senior security engineer. So, uh, you know, it's a varied day for sure. Uh, most of my day revolves around planning projects and scheduling myself to do projects. Um, like I mainly do VMware um, networking and firewall security implementation, right? For software, security software products, firewalls, VPNs, um, large scale network interconnectivity stuff and uh, virtual servers, um, which all needs to be secured. Um, mainly my day revolves around trying to get my various tasks done and responding to security incidences as they happen. We manage a little over 4,000 endpoints for our clients. So on a typical day, we will normally have one person clicking on a phishing email mm -hmm. and, or two or three or 10, um, which needs to be checked out that the virus scans came clean. How bad was the fish? Was it a known one that has really bad stuff in it? You know, uh, how do we react? Is it just change your password, run a virus scan, move on with our day? Or is it, do we need to start investigating further at that something may have happened? Um, just the other day, we had someone call and say, hey, we have someone working with a QuickBooks vendor and they asked for a credit card. And 
our red flag immediately went off and QuickBooks does not ask for credit cards. You've already paid for support. So they had a client in their network for 36 hours yeah. connected via a go to meeting um, or, um, you know, uh, go to rescue uh, mm-hmm. session and on their, one of their servers. And so start locking everything down, start making sure they're secure, start going through all the logs start contacting their their insurance agency and their lawyers and do we need to contact um you know the cops are they already contacting the cops because they have a credit card fraud that just happened Uh, contact helping them contact their bank get credit card numbers changed to then reviewing the entire network once we lock it all down and make sure it's secure then that it's not ongoing now we start seeing what had happened right so now we start figuring out what happened when it happened who did it how long they were in there, what files they accessed, if they have the logging capabilities for that, um, you know, and then, you know, to simple things like, um, like uh, Selena said, checking my US cert notifications for any vulnerabilities that are known for today. Mm-hmm. Do we need to contact our clients? Uh, I get a list of like 20, 30 things every single day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's scroll through this. Are these any products that we use? Are these any products we know our clients use? Do we got to notify anybody? Is it on, already on the patch schedule? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is it a patch that's going to be impacting? Do we have to put out communications? And then I'll work with our communications team to get out any security notification patches. So it's a pretty varied day. I stay pretty busy. Wow. Um, and like after this, I'm going to go install a new firewall. They have um a current firewall vendor and we're putting in our product with our standard security packages in vault you know in place um for secure ssl vpn secure site to site vpn goip mm-hmm. filtering ids ips uh, the the whole technical mumbo jumbo of letters gotcha. um you know uh, for two sites uh, one on Mackinac island and one here in traverse city oh, wow. um so it's um you know it's a pretty big uh pretty big rollout to improve their security and connectivity have um, you seen have you seen their changes um, to what the, your customers are needing with now kind of this new more remote workforce or work environment? Have you noticed any difference from uh, your end? Uh, yeah, we have probably a good 30 or 40 times the number of VPN licenses uh, okay. deployed than we had prior to COVID. Um, and most of our clients, we do laptops. We do already have VPN firewalls in place. Um, we do have remote connectivity with Office 365, uh, Teams sharing, SharePoint okay. sites, all that good stuff. So for us, it was a matter of just increasing licensing, getting a few clients that didn't have laptops out some hardware and continuing on with our days. Um, you know, So we implement that security stack for remote connectivity as part of our standard procedures for our clients. So they already had that capability, maybe not at the level they needed. So we needed to add more licenses. Maybe we needed to bump up a couple pieces of hardware to handle okay. more connections. Um, but we implement a secure remote connectivity stack for most of our clients already. Okay. So it wasn't too big a change for us. Um, I just went home and plugged in at my home office. Absolutely no change for me. Yeah. Um, I can work anywhere. I'm in the office today, like I said, because I'm doing a firewall swap down the road here as soon as this is over. Um, so, you know, I traveled that beforehand. Okay. Um, so now we're getting close to the end of, of yep. this um, portion of it. I just have one question for you. What would you recommend? What do you, what do you recommend? What are the top like two things you recommend to your customers? Um, you know, as far as cybersecurity goes, what would be um, your top two? What should do they not do? Share passwords between accounts. Okay. Don't use the same password for your bank as you use for your emails, as you use for your Facebook, as you use for your, your business. Darn. <laughs> Absolutely, they should be separate. Use a password management tool. Um, there are lots of good reviews for various products from free to ones you pay for. Uh, Google is your friend. Find one that works for your needs. Um, but you do not want your school password the same as your bank password, the same as your work password, the same as your Facebook password. Um, right. Any one of those sites get, get attacked and get their passwords leaked, then they have your password for everything. So you just want to make sure those are separate. Use a good password manager. That's probably our biggest. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good AV. And good AV. (laughs) Yeah. Good antivirus protection. Um, Selena, anything that you would want to recommend for, um, you know, from things that you see, what would you would recommend to um, people in your organization as far as being secure? 
cyber secure? Very much like Jeff said, uh, unique passwords everywhere, secure passwords, and multi-factor across okay. all of your accounts. Okay. Enable multi-factor at everywhere you can. Okay, super. Would it, would you, if, um, as far as multi-factor goes, do you find there to be um, uh, one source that's better than another for, for doing that as far as um, some of the different tools that are out there, you know, doing a, a, a text verification. What do you, when you talk about multi-factor, um, what multi, would you, oh, sorry. no, go ahead. Any multi-factor would be better than no multi-factor. Okay. I would definitely recommend like an app that generates a sequence rather than using an SMS message just because there are ways to hijack that SMS code. You could do a SIM swap and get that information. You wouldn't know necessarily if somebody had done that to you unless you realized you hadn't gotten any messages in a very long time. Right. Uh, and then your information may already be compromised. So I would definitely recommend an app if it's possible. Okay. Well, thank you both. Um, stick around, please, because we are going to have some um, further follow-up questions. But I would like to start talking to our educational leaders, Scott and Colin. Um, we have um, folks that are interested in cybersecurity as far as a pathway goes. Um, what is a typical pathway? Where do they start? And what would, what would it look like to... Um, uh, for somebody who is in the middle school to high school level right now, what would be that typical pathway to a cyber, becoming a cybersecurity professional? Colin, you wanna start? Sure, thanks, Cindy. Uh, usually the students that, that come to the Career Tech Center, uh, again, they're juniors and seniors in high school. So they either enter the program as a junior and hope to plan, plan on spending two years there, or sometimes they may attend one program and then decide, hey, I wanna try IT out as well. So there's, there's a, a range of uh, reasons why students might decide to come to the Career Tech Center to the IT program. It could be uh, from attending our Cool Tech Camp, which is a summer camp that we offer for fifth through eighth graders. And it just gives them a taste of what IT might be. And uh, we also do eighth grade visits. And then again, 10th grade visits, eighth grade visits, they get to see the programs, all of the programs, again, just to kind of see what their interest level might be. But then by 10th grade, they really have to make their decision. So they choose three programs, they spend a half an hour in each one of those programs for that day for that session. And that's really how they narrow it down. So it could be one of those ways that they uh, end up coming to IT. It could also be a parent uh, that might be in the field, a friend that might be in the field. A lot of the time though, they're, the students are gamers and that's mm -hmm. where it starts. They know they have some interest in gaming. They'll, there'll be some students that are really interested in Linux. They'll be, they're, they're all over the map. So that's generally how the students decide to come to the IT program. And a lot of the time they come in thinking they know a ton and quickly they realize that they don't know as much as they do, but we have so many different skill levels. It's really neat because I know Jeff and uh, Selena had touched on the soft skills and the tech skills. And um, we have, I, I get a lot of both. I get students that are very, very outgoing, but aren't really strong with technical skills. But then I also get some students that are very introverted and uh, aren't very social, but their, their tech skills are very good. So it, it's a balance of trying to, you know, trying to teach those students, you know, trying to work on their strengths and then also work on their opportunities where we can expand uh, so that when they go, when they end up going to safety net or they end up going to Munston or uh, NMC, the next step as well, they're ready to go and, uh, they have a nice career path from there. Super. And what do what courses do you offer? Is there a certain? Um, I mean, I know you mentioned IT in general. Are there certain courses that they would come in and take? Is it something that they do for um, a full year? How does what does that look like? Sure. Uh, so the students generally, it's a, it's a full year. So they spend half of their day with me whether it's their for their junior year and senior year so really if they take if they take the IT program for two years 
they will have spent a quarter of their high school experience in the IT program, okay. which, which is really something. And uh, so we have an AM block and we have a PM block and each block is about two, two hour sessions. So what I do is I do an AB curriculum. So this year, the students are doing Network Pro and we're working, we do a combination of, we uh, work through test out or mm-hmm. go uh, different curriculums. And uh, the students get to get to experience those in online simulation formats. And then they get to, we also have a work area in the back that they get to put their hands on and actually test those in a real world environment. So this year we're focusing on networking. And then next year would be our A year and we'll go into, um, PC Pro, which is, is which is prepping students for their next certifications, whether it's the A plus certification or if they decide to go the Cisco route, whatever it might be. But that's um, that's what we're preparing students for. So next year would be hardware, software, operating systems, troubleshooting, mobile devices, things like that. Gotcha, great. And then Scott. Um, you know, from, from that point, what does it look like? Um, what is a typical pathway when they come to you at Northwestern Michigan College? So at NMC, we offer uh, not only a degree program, an associate degree program in infrastructure and sec- cybersecurity, uh, but we also have one in software development as well. And in addition to the degree programs, we offer several different certificates that students can uh, earn. We work closely with Collins area. Uh, We have for a number of years now, uh, trying to find ways to build a relationship between our program and theirs. But uh, the the focus is really trying to get the the students to understand, you know, how they can go further and deeper than what they might learn in in Collins program. Uh, He does a fantastic job. A lot of the students that come out of Collins programs uh, may have already taken some of the certifications that we actually will do at NMC. And if that's the case, what we will do is articulate those credits so that they don't have to take necessarily a class. So if somebody comes to me with their Network Plus certification from uh, an organization called CompTIA, we will give them credit for that class without them having to necessarily take it because they've proven themselves and have the knowledge in the industry. So that's an important piece. So the students will come to our program and then what we do is we focus on taking them, like I said, to the next level as much as possible. If, if I can you know, step back for just a second and we think about what Jeff said and Selena said and even what Colin said, even though this is a conversation that we're having today around cybersecurity, every one of them mentioned technology as a base fundamental. Jeff mentioned VMware and virtualization and the things that he did. Selena mentioned networking. Collins mentioned networking and, and PC hardware and PC repair. So for the folks that want to get into cybersecurity, you have to understand the basic knowledge mm-hmm. of that. And that's one of the things that we really try to focus and hit it hard on is we want you to make sure you know networking inside and out. Okay? We will do have a programming language. We're gonna have you learn a little bit about Python yeah. so you can learn about automation and scripting. Okay, we're gonna have some operating system courses for you so that you can learn about Windows Server, okay? And how that works as well as Linux. So that when you're trying to run a Kali box on Linux, or use those tools, you have an understanding of what they are and how they work. Because without that knowledge, if somebody wants to go into cybersecurity, you're trying to learn that as you go. So for us, there's a huge focus on the foundational knowledge in our program. The cybersecurity is there, okay? Right now we offer four different classes that focus on cybersecurity. And we align our classes to the CompTIA mm-hmm. certification exams uh, that are available. And we chose them because we have a longstanding relationship with them. And there's nothing wrong with any of the other certifications out there. But we felt that the relationship with uh, CompTIA that we could leverage uh, was, was a good one. And so we also looked at cost as far as some of these exams are concerned, because taking a certification exam isn't necessarily cheap. So we wanted to make sure that we found something that was affordable, something that we felt our students could do. So they come to our program, hoping to get their associate degree. We work with them in the foundational technologies. We help them get the cybersecurity certifications as well. And a student coming through their associate degree can earn potentially eight, nine different industry certifications as a result of the classes they take. The next pathway 
is usually students that want to transfer to a four-year university. Mm -hmm. And we have partnerships with primarily Fair State University. Students actually can go through NMC as part of a three plus one, where they do three years at Northwestern Michigan College, one year through Fair State University while still residing in Traverse City. So they don't have to travel to Big Rapids. They can do it through NMC's University Center and earn their bachelor's degree in computer information technology. Um, So it's a way for them to get the business degree. The other thing that I think, and I'll I'll end here, that I think is really important is the fact that, as Jeff mentioned, as Selena mentioned, they work in a business environment. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely important that you understand not only the tech stuff, the soft skills, communication, verbal, written, important, but also how business operates. Because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to work for a business, Okay, you're not going to be doing tech all day. You're going to be doing tech as it relates to the businesses that you operate and work with and their goals. Perfect. And uh, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on a number of those things, um, especially to the the foundational piece. And I I do get a lot of um, folks that are not only interested in starting, you know, a career in cybersecurity, but also people who are interested in starting a cybersecurity education program. And I always say, well, what, you know, do you teach networking? Do you teach programming? You got to start there. That's the foundation for what, what, we're, what you're trying to secure in the cyberspace. Um, you mentioned, Colin mentioned, Jeff, Selena, everybody here has talked about certifications. Are certifications important in this industry? And, um, I, you know, is that, is that something that they have to do in addition to um, a formal education? I try to I, I try to definitely emphasize, and like Scott said, the certifications are not cheap. I definitely try to emphasize to my students and their parents by the time they walk out, it's great to be able to say I can I can do this and I can build a network and I can troubleshoot. But it, it, I mean that's you know that's lip service up to that point until they actually have something in their hand that's tangible, a certification that actually shows everybody. I mean, that speaks volumes that these students can do that and they're prepared to enter the workforce. So I I think certifications are super important. How about you, Scott? Yeah, I agree. It's validation of skills. That's Mm -hmm. what it comes down to. The students now have a chance to validate that they understand the material that they've been covering in a course uh, that they're learning. And so from an employer perspective, Uh, it's a win situation as well, because they know that that student or that person has a base level of knowledge that they don't necessarily have to train them. They they have, now the bar is raised up a little bit. They can hit the ground running and they have certain expectations that they know will be met, hopefully because the individual has passed the certification. Mm -hmm. So I see it as a win-win, actually win solution. (laughs) Uh, The students win because they have something they can put on a resume This shows that they have a passion and they believe in continuous improvement, continuous learning. And I think all of us will agree that even in the in the tech field, we're continuously learning every day. I know at least I am. And then this uh, from the employer, it shows they have the they can hit the ground running. And for me, it's a way of validating that I'm teaching my students the things that they need to know and that I'm doing my job because if they can pass those certifications and then I'm aligning those courses to those certifications. Uh, it's beneficial for me as well. So I think the certifications can be the difference between somebody getting a job and not. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at it like the icing on the cake. If you have two equally qualified applicants going for the same job and one's got certification, then likely an employer will take a look at that and may put them in a different pile than they would the individual that doesn't have that certification. Yeah. Very good point. Thank you both. Um, You mentioned, Colin, a camp or something for the between fifth and eighth grade. What would you recommend for um, students maybe that are in middle school or do you have any camps coming up? Do you have any activities to engage them further if if they want to continue um, learning about cybersecurity, networking, IT, whatever that might be? Sure. We, we, like I said, we do offer that cool tech camp. That's a three day camp, three hours a day during the summer for those three days. And that's just to kind of give them um, a brief 
introduction to one of the programs that we might offer. We do all also have um, Cyber Patriot. A lot of the students in, in the program are involved in Cyber Patriot, which is uh, set up through the Air Force Academy. And those are, uh, they're, they're companies that keep an eye on what's going on with the high school level. Middle schoolers are involved in that too. And it, it's just, it's a, a higher level of thinking because the students are given basically a real brief scenario of what's going on. They're given some images and they don't have a sheet that is a checklist of what they have to do. So the students are, are put together with uh, in teams of up to six students and they have to really, uh, they have to really go for that information and try to dig down deep as far as the skills and the knowledge that they've learned up to that point and see how that it can, it can be applied. So we, I introduced them through the Cyber Patriot program. I also uh, aligned with, uh, with Newton's Road here and yourself through Cisco for the intro to cybersecurity program mm -hmm. as well, because regardless of if they're into the hardware and the software, I mean, cybersecurity like we're talking about is it's only growing. And that that need is there. So, and then Scott also has hosted cybersecurity camps in the summer for Cyber Patriot as well. And I'll let him highlight that. Right. Yeah. For the last two years, uh, I've been involved with the Air Force Association's Cyber Patriot program from the standpoint of the summer uh, cyber mm -hmm. camps. And it's essentially a week long camp in which the students learn about cybersecurity principles from the defensive side. Okay, so we're not hacking into anything, mm -hmm. but we're learning what to look out for and how to protect uh, systems. And for four days, they learn a little bit about different operating systems and the, and the secure practices. And then on the fifth day, it's a competition amongst the students uh, in the class. So they're given uh, a, um, as Colin would say, an image, a virtualization platform, which they then have to go in and identify and find all the areas where there might be a problem and then fix those. And for each one they fix, they can earn points. And in the end, uh, there's certificates for completing the camp. And we've done it a couple of times pre-COVID. We did it face-to-face -face and it was a ball. Um, yeah. And we'll be looking at doing those. They haven't uh, confirmed the date, but it's going to be in uh, June. And I believe July is when they're going to take place this year. We're still trying to figure out if it'll be virtual or face-to-face, uh, -face, but we can mm -hmm. operate in either mode. Um, and uh, if people are interested, they can go to the uscyberpatriot.org website to find out more information. Super. Great. And I'm sure um, that Newton's Road will be posting more information on that as we get closer as well. Um, okay. So I think we're about to the point where we've got some um, questions from the audience. Um, Barb, did you, was there anybody that had anything, and this is, we can open this up to all of our participants, um, as you know, the industry, as well as the education side. Absolutely. Um, we had one question around internships and how that plays in, I think related to, you know, talking about putting the technology into practice and business operate in understanding the businesses, um, and, uh, while communication is important, et cetera. So if any, I think it would be interesting to hear about that from both education and business. I can field that one. Um, we actually work pretty closely with NMC in um, trying to have at least one, sometimes two interns a year um, for our company. And now this normally isn't with cybersecurity specifically, um, but as Scott said, that foundational tech mm -hmm. of how things work, how a business works, how a business uses IT um, can be a huge resume booster to getting your first interviews into the professional world. So we tend to have um, interns here at SafetyNet um, doing everything from PC deployments to varied clients to assisting with project work. Um, obviously entry level stuff, but you get exposed to the process. You can ask questions, um, and, you know, and even uh, you know, creating tickets and, and starting to communicate with clients. Um, so that gives you a ton of experience in the foundational stuff that you need to have for cybersecurity. So um, it's something that we like to do as a company. Um, we've hired many of our interns to be full-time employees, um, have turned out to be great, 
great employees um, getting that foundational education from the Career Tech Center and NNMC. Um, several have continued working here while finishing at Ferris State to get their bachelor's as well. Um, but those certs for someone without a lot of job experience are a big booster to getting those getting those interviews and getting those internships. So, is is does it is a college degree required for a job in um, your organization? That's a tough question, um, and a lot of businesses get asked that. And I would have to say. Um, what a college degree shows is commitment to the career. Mm -hmm. um, what safety and, and, and same with the certifications. If you have a truckload of certifications, that can get you an interview where uh, maybe a degree without certifications would have gotten you an interview as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, me being in the industry twenty plus years, while I do have certifications that I'm maintaining my Cisco and my CEH. I'm not chasing a lot of other certifications. My experience, and mm -hmm. you know, is is giving me that. But for new people, uh, I think the combination of an at least associate's degree and certifications are going to be a better combination to get you those interviews to get your first mm -hmm. job. Whereas maybe some experience and certification, if you have internships, if you can get entry level jobs with without a degree, um, and build an experience. Uh, we have hired people without degrees that have experience and certifications as well. So it kind of varies, right? It's kind of building right. up that combination of experience, certifications, and, and education mm -hmm. uh, to meet those minimum foundational levels to do whichever job you're looking for, at least on our side of the business. Okay. And if I could jump in for just a second, you're right. Certifications can get you that job, but a lot of employers will still be looking for the degree because if you are all technical background, we still have to have those soft skills and communications mm -hmm. for both written and verbal that students need to be able to demonstrate. And it's the combination of the two that's going to take them and move them forward. As far exactly. as the internships, I work very, very closely with organizations like Safety Net, like Munson to help our students secure employment in the different uh businesses in the community. And so as part of our program, students are required for the associate degree to do an internship in a supervised paid IT related setting for up to 150 hours as part of the program, where okay. they can take the skills that they've learned in the classroom and then hopefully utilize those on the job while also learning about how that whole business cultural thing works and how or businesses are organized and how they do things. Um, it's quite different oftentimes than the classroom. So it's a great opportunity for students to take what they've learned and use it, but also reflect back from what they learned on the, on the job as part of the internship. Great, great. And ju jumping on what Scott had talked about, going back to the internship opportunities, uh, Scott and I, we've teamed up, NMC and uh, the Career Tech Center have teamed up and we do uh, industry night outs. And I know Munson and Safety Net are two of the wonderful companies that have hosted us in the past. So at the high school level, we're able to get students into those organizations so they can showcase what the organization does. They can show us how IT is used. So that, that allows the students to kind of start building those relationships, right? They're not only building it with NMC, if that's the pathway that they go, but they're also getting their faces and their names in front of these organizations that host us. So hopefully those internship opportunities will come out of that. And it's a win-win for both because then it's not, the student has been in the door before they know about that organization and they're not just applying to a job just because it's out there. They, if they're applying to Munson, they've seen Munson's organization, they want to be there. If they apply to safety net, they know what safety net is all about, the fun that they have, they want to be there. So it's, it, it's really a great, and again, that's, it's building the relationships so that the students can, like we've said in the past, can hit the ground running and be ready to go and uh, be ready and prepared for these organizations that are willing to hire them. Fantastic. Wow. I am impressed um, with everything I have heard today. Um, new, I'm a bit newer to the area, but um, you guys have got you know uh, world-class programs going up here and it's really exciting to see that. Um, Barb, did you have any more questions from the audience? Um, 
No, I think that the other thing that came up was around um, the, the soft skills, but I think we really covered it. We talked from formal training on that, like the management to um, having a degree in addition to certifications mm -hmm. and that bringing it in and the experience with internships are all some great ways to help build that. You know, in, in Cisco, we used to joke that everybody should also have a job at McDonald's because you have to learn to talk to people. <laughs> so <laughs> you can take creative creative ways to work on your soft skills. <laughs> yeah. um, so fun. that was the other thing that really came up. I think that um, they did a really thorough job. Um, well, wonderful. Well, good. Well, um, I thank you guys for taking the time today to do this and to um, share your experiences and opportunities that are available and Barb Newton's road for everything that, that your organization does for um, the community and for getting students interested in, you know, not just STEM, but cybersecurity as well. So. All right. All right. Um, so I will um, take back the screen. All right. So um, we definitely want to also thank our sponsors because we are a nonprofit and we wouldn't be here at all without having sponsors. So um, we want to thank everyone who's involved uh, in, in these organizations who are our um, primary sponsors, but we have a lot of others that support us in, in many different ways. And also want to call out a huge thank you to those that are here today supporting um, for the Travers Area Community Media who are, are helping us with the whole um, capturing of this uh, panel. So thank you to Matt and his team. And then of course, Munson Healthcare, Safety Net, the TBA ISD Career Tech Center and Northwestern Michigan College who are represented through um, the, our panelists. So thank you all again. And we wanted to, to close with some ways that um, you can stay tuned. You know, how can you find out more um, so one, uh, we have the technology career areas on the career investigator for Northwest Michigan, uh, and that URL is right there. Um, and it's, a, it's an interesting tool because it has, um, it has this wheel format, if you see it here, where you can, I have it on systems administrator, we can go over to that cybersecurity analyst role that, um, that uh, Cindy had up. And then you can learn a lot about it. There's some data that's specific for our region, but we also have what we call a local advantage pathway. And that's where you could find out an example pathway like the one that Scott shared, um, where um, you can see some videos about it, what a typical day, um, some things that you can do um, while you're still in school uh, and, and then where you can study further. Um, and then this advantage pathway that talks about the articulations. And, um, and then you can also hook into employers such as safety net, where we can go um, right back you know, over to learning about their company and who their contact is. They wanted to open up to emails that you could send them an email and express your interest. So uh, they also talk about doing internships and um, Munson is actually in the process of getting theirs up. <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's a great way. Um, and then there's other careers you can see in addition to the security analyst, there's the IT support specialist and systems administrator. So you can kind of say, oh, they also hire these jobs. And you can go over there and learn about what those look like. So, um, and this is um, something like they say, it's a continual learning process. And I learned some things today that we're gonna make sure to include them. Um, we've met before with Scott on their programs, but we wanna make sure we give the best representation for all of the different pathways that we have. So, um, so anyway, this is a, a great tool, locally relevant. And we did this because some of the tools that are nationally available do not really represent um, our, our area well. But there's also, if you want to reach out to Colin and Scott, here are their emails um, in case um, there's, uh, you want to talk to them directly about their programs and how you could 
um, enter into them and other summer offerings that they have, but we will have those in our calendar and newsletter, which brings us to the last one. If you go to newtonsroad.org at the top of our website, it says mail, um, mailing list and you join that and then you'll get the news about these kinds of camps. And we also have a camp feature to search for those. So um, it's a great way to stay up on it. And the tccyber.org, which is under 20 fathoms and where Cindy is teaching in, in this case, the Learnathon, that they have other um, events. They tend to be you know, more adult oriented, but I think it's a, there are things that um, would be suitable for um, high school students um, periodically and a great way to continue a connection further on. Uh, and we've also spoken around that, the ISA org. So it's about time for us to sign off here. And uh, we wanna thank everyone for coming and we look forward to having um, more sessions like this in the future to explore regional careers.